The book of Ephesians chapter 5. We'll be reading from verse 14. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We read the scripture in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And for a blessing unto our souls. Hallelujah. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Amen? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen? May God give his blessing to his word this morning. You may be seated. Hallelujah. And we're going to... We're going to meditate on the Word of God this morning under the topic, Redeeming Our Time. Amen? Redeeming Our Time. Making good use of our time. In our lives as we go on, even, though, even as Christians, we get sometimes entangled in the many works uh, of our daily life. As parents, you can imagine you have a lot of things to think about your children, uh, what to give them to eat, uh, do they need anything for school, if you are getting ready for work, what do you need this week for work, what does your wife need, what does your husband need, if the car needs fixing, many, 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 many other things that come to mind in our daily life, even as Christians, because we are Christians, but yet we are humans too, amen? Amen. We also live in a normal life, blessed be the name of the Lord. And there are things we need to uh, take care of in our lives. But there is the the slight danger or the slight uh, disconvenience or inconvenience that we sometimes get too involved in the daily worries, in the things that keep us moving in this world. And sometimes this causes, causes us to fall into, let us say, a sleep, blessed be the name of the Lord, a sleep that is not... Um, considered as uh, losing the salvation as yet, but slightly losing sight of what truly is important in our life. Losing sight of what, what truly God has called us to do and how he has called us to live in this world. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And so that's where this apostle comes from and he says to them, Wherefore I say unto you, arise, awake from the sleep, arise from the dead. Because sometimes we get that involved that we sleep, that the, the worries, the works of darkness, which sometimes lull the soul, it causes us to sleep and it causes us to fall into, let us say, a coma. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And it's dangerous for someone to fall into a coma because we don't know whether or not you are going to wake up from that coma. But to this morning, the Word of God, which is the most powerful tool, has the power to call us to life and is calling us to wake up, to arise from the dead. Because for God, sleep equals dead, equals darkness. I don't know if you under, understood it. For God, sleep equals darkness, it equals dead. So if you are asleep, for God, is the same thing as dead. That's why he says, Wake up, and then he says, arise from the dead. He calls us to an action. He calls us to do our part. And then we will get the light of Jesus in our lives. Many times we want the things in reverse. Lord, give me light. Give me blessings. Give me this. Give me that. But the Lord calls us to wake up first. Make sure, be aware, hallelujah, that you are falling under a coma of the things of the world. Because if we see nowadays, everybody is worried. Everybody is worried about finances, about everything. Worried, 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 worried. And sometimes we fall under that, uh, um, that custom that we too get worried about the things. We too get worried about what we need, about what we lack. But as the song just said this morning, the worship song, he is, he is what? He is my peace. And I cast all my cares on him because he cares for me. I cast all my worries. I cast all my need upon him because I know that he takes care of me. How many can praise the Lord? And so when we wake up, we abandon the works of darkness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then Christ will give us light. And then he says, see then that once you have woken up, 
Once that you have risen from the dead, once that you are living life as Christ wants us to live it, he says, now don't walk around and do things just because I know I have Jesus in my life. No, for example, and sometimes let's put it in this way, you know that there's a hole there. And if you walk in that direction, you're going to fall into the hole. But no, G Jesus will take care of me. I'm not going to walk into the hole and fall down. Because Jesus is going to, no, no, no. We have our part to play. There's a hole. The Word of God says the wise sees the danger and departs from it. Amen. We do our part. And the Word of God says, see then that you walk circumspectly. To walk circumspectly means to walk looking around. You need to be aware of what is around you. Amen. The Word of God says that we do not fight against flesh. We fight against principalities, against fallen angels, fallen kingdoms. We are aware of what is around us. We don't walk around, as the saying goes, like chickens without heads. Not knowing where we're going, not knowing what we're doing. No, we walk circumspectly. We look around. We are aware of our surroundings. And he says... Walk around circumspectly, it means to have a careful consideration of all circumstances and a desire to avoid mistakes and bad consequences. Once again, to walk circumspectly is to be aware, to consider everything that is around me and I have the desire, hallelujah, to avoid making mistakes and having bad consequences. That's why he says, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Because the fool, my brethren, sees the danger. He tolerates it. Ah, I can handle it. It's just a little a small sin, small this, small that. I can handle it. You tolerate it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You don't take measures and therefore, you are damaged on the long run. You are damaged by that sin. You are damaged by whatever it is you are tolerating. But the wise, as we said, has a desire to avoid making mistakes. Has a desire to please God in everything that he does. Has a desire, hallelujah, that God may give him only good consequences in his life. And that is what, what the apostle means by redeeming our time, making good use of it. Because sometimes we think, oh, no, I'm 16. I have a long life before me. I'm 25. I have a long life before me. I'm 30. I have a long life before me. How many can praise the Lord? But when you look at the newspapers today, when you look at the news today, we see that death has no age. Comes knocking at everyone's door as a child, as a young man, a young woman, an adult, an elderly person. It doesn't matter. But when I come up there, when I present myself before the Lord, the Lord will ask me, what have you done with your time? How did you invest your time? How did you make good use of your time? Why? Because the days are evil. Amen. Even if you're not saying amen, the word says the days are evil. There's nothing we can do about it. But that's why you need to make good use of your time. Take away the things, hallelujah, that are feeding off of your perfect time with God. Take away the things. Do not tolerate the things that are weighing you down. The apostle said in another part of the word, run this race. Amen. Because it, life is a race. But he says... Lay down every weight, things that weigh us down and do not allow us to run the race to our full capacity in an optimal way. Redeem your time. Throw down the things because God knows you have the capacity to run, let's say, at 10 miles per hour. You can run that way, but because you are carrying things, you're not redeeming your time well. You are running at a lower pace than what you should be running. Therefore, making the race even longer than it should be for you. So it all depends on how we are redeeming our time. How we are managing our time. And if you go with me to the book of Romans, chapter 13. You'll understand why God is calling us to redeem our time. Romans, chapter 13. 
Blessed be the name of Jesus. Romans 13, verses 11. It says, and that knowing the time. Do you know what time it is? What time is it for you in this, in today? What time it is, is it for you? Is it time to sleep? Is it time to relax? Is it time to say, no, I've run enough? Is it time to say, no, I know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I'm okay. I can relax. Do you know what time it is? The Word of God says, knowing the time. That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. When there is high time, it talks about there is an emergency. You need to wake up or you will perish. It's one of the both. There is a red light. It is high time. It is high time. You know when the firefighters get the alarm sounding in, 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 in the department? When the alarm sounds, they don't just, okay, let's wake up. Let me put on this. Don't forget the tank. Oh, my helmet is over there. Oh, I forgot my cape is on the other side. No. They have everything ready. That when the alarm sounds, and run down that pole and run towards the emergency, it's high time. You need to redeem. And why does that firefighter have everything right there? Because he wants to make good use of his time. He doesn't have time to run to the helmet over there, to run to the, the, the extinguisher on that side. His clothes are over there. The shoes are over here. No, he has everything here, clothes, that when the alarm sounds, he redeems his time, works everything because it's high time to wake up, ready to move, ready to get into action. And the apostle says, you know the time. That it is high time to awake out of sleep. Why? For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. You see why you have to make good use of your time? If you can remember the day you came to Jesus and they gave you the message, first of all, that Jesus loves you, that he can change your life, that he can save you from your sins. But afterwards, during those days, I can imagine you have heard the message that he is coming soon. And when that first time you heard that message, it gave you this, this push, this, this uh, hope. Oh, Jesus is coming soon. I need to keep my life in order, keep my life at a certain level because I want to be ready when he comes. You remember that day? Do you have it in your mind? That day you heard the message of Jesus? But do you also remember that during the days and the weeks, you kind of slow down in that aspect. And then once again, when, 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 whenever a preacher or a message on the radio, on a television, or on a social media, you hear again, Jesus is coming soon. Then you again, oh yes, I forgot. Or it's gone in the back of my mind that he is coming soon and now there's something I need to fix. Let me fix it quick and be ready because he's coming soon. But it should be an every day, every minute, every second of our life thing. Remembering that he is coming soon. Lord, I want to be ready. Father, keep me clean. Father, keep me holy. Father, keep me ready, ready, ready. So when, when the trumpets sound, I can be ready to go. Father, help me to redeem my time. Help me make good use of my time, the life that you have given me. And that whenever you are ready to call me, I'm ready to go. Because we should be ready. Not making preparations, being prepared. Amen. When Jesus comes, when the trumpet sounds, you should not be preparing. You should be prepared, ready, done. Because you are making good use of your time. And he says... The night is far spent. The night, talking about this dark age that we are living in. Amen? Where God says we are the light shining in this darkness. Where the prince of darkness is working his iniquities in the lives of the people. But we are supposed to shine there and show the light. And he says the night is far spent. The night is already long gone past the time that God would allow it to be. 
but it's because of his mercy and his grace. But we shouldn't think that, okay, the Lord is ter tarrying. He's taking his time. Well, then I'm going to take my time too. Remember, it is us that needs the Lord, not the Lord that needs us. You get it? It's us that needs. We that need the Lord, not the Lord that needs us. If I need someone to help me with transportation and is coming to pick me up, when they come to pick me up, I'm supposed to be outside. Right? If they say I'm gonna, they're going to come and pick me up at 7 o'clock, I'm supposed to be there 5 to 7, 10 to 7 outside because I'm in need of them. That when they arrive, I could go. Now that when they arrive, they should wait upon me because it's me who needs them. It's the same thing with the Lord. He says, I am coming soon. Be ready. When he comes, he's not going to wait on you. It's us. It's we that need him. The night is far gone. It's already long gone. The days are going by. I don't know if you have noticed how the days are flying by. Yesterday, we were celebrating New Year's. We are already going into February. Before you know it, we're in June. Before you know it, we're in August. Before you know it, we're in December again. The days are flying by. How are you making good use of your time? And it says, the day is at hand. Morning is coming. The glorious morning when Jesus will come for his people. It talks in a prophecy, in a way of prophecy speaking, the day of the Lord is coming. The night is going to end. That's why the psalmist says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Hold on, my brother. Hold on, my sister. This night is not forever. Hold on because day is coming. Be ready. Make good use of your time. And he says, let us therefore, and remember, he is speaking to who? The Romans. Cast off all the works of darkness. Take them off. Avoid them. Remember, you are walking circumspectly. You want to avoid making mistakes. The word of God says, where the apostle says about the athlete that runs the race. The athlete abstains from many things because he has a prize in his mind. He wants to reach the finish line. He wants to get the gold medal. Therefore, you won't find the athlete eating McDonald's, Kentucky, fried chicken, chuzos, hamburguesas. You won't find the athlete eating those things. Arepa, rellena, papa, rellena. Eh? Coca-Cola, Sprite. You won't find the athlete eating or drinking those things because he wants to finish the race. He wants to reach the end, the end and not just reach it, win the race. You want to win the race, don't you? I want to win the race. I don't know if you want to win the race. And if you want to win the race, there are things you need to abstain from. You need to keep them out because they weigh you down. They, they, they put on weight that should not be there. They don't allow you to run at an optimal pace that God wants you to have in your life. And God wants you to win. Many people twist things and say, no, but if God loves us, why does he this? Why does he that? It's not God, it's sin. It's the sin that we need to abstain from in order to run at the speed that God wants us to run. Because the day is at hand, it's coming. Cast off the works of darkness and let us put on what? The armor of light. Amen? That we may be light. Our works should be works of light. Works that are pleasing to the Lord. Works, hallelujah, that bring joy to God and to others. That when they see us, they don't only see me, they see Jesus. Because I have his armor of light in my life. So how am I redeeming my time? Because the word of God says the days are evil. Young man, young woman that is here this morning, I know we're young. Yes. It seems like you can grab the world with your two hands and yet you are in control of everything. But remember one thing. 
The word of God says that life is like a whisper. One moment it's here, the next it's gone. The word of God says that life is like grass. Today it's green, in the afternoon it's withered, it's gone. Make good use of your time. And to make good use of our time as Christians, what are we supposed to do, do you think? We're supposed to what? Relax? Come to church and say, Pastor, pray for me and let Pastor do everything? Is that what we're supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're supposed to fight our fight. The apostle said, fight the good battle of faith. I can't fight it for you. You can't fight it for me. Yes, sometimes we need each other for support and for help in prayer. But you need to fight your battle. I need to fight mine. Because at the end, God is not going to ask this sister about me. Neither is God going to ask me about my brother. He's going to ask me, what did I do with my time? How did I make use, good use of the time that he has given me? And we have a, a great example where the Lord speaks in, in the parables of the servants. That he gave each and every one of them talents. Some ten, another five, another one. And the word of God says the master left. And when he came back, the one that had ten multiplied it. He made good use of his time. He made twenty. Master, here I am. Twenty. Oh, yes. Good and faithful servant. The other one that had five, yes, master, here it is. Now I have ten. I've made good use of my time. But the other one that had one, just one, one, one. As the saying goes, you had one simple job. And yet we fail at it. He had one. And he said, master, I, I, I'm very afraid of you. I know you reap where you did not sow. So I just buried it, and that's it. I, I buried it and waited for you to come back, to give you that same thing which, I have given, which you have given me. He did not make good use of his time. He did not a desire to avoid making mistakes and having bad consequences. And when the master came, the master said, you couldn't at least have put it in the bank. That when I, come, I, I, when I would have returned, I would have at least gotten a little bit more than just what I have given you. He wants us to redeem our time. So today, analyze your life. Look, reflect upon yourself and say, Lord, am I redeeming my time? Because the days are evil. What is my focus? What am I focusing on? What are the worries that are taking my sight off of you? What are the things that are trying to take me away from the race? What are the things that are weighing me down that are not allowing me to run at the speed you want me to run? How many can praise the Lord this morning? Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah.